Should we do that? I wish that I could. Song? <laughs> Please? You know, I basically destroyed my throat that day that we sang that song. You had been sick, though. Later that know. night, you remember, my throat started hurting? Yes. Do you remember and it's that? been hurting ever since. That ever since? Yeah. Can't have been the damn Maroon 5 song. And I can't, uh, I can't sing very well anymore, either. Like, if I get, try doing that kind of stuff, my throat starts to, like, lock up or do weird crap. Weird. Hey, dude, it's probably cancer. Hey, little sister, what's the worst show ever? That gets my goat. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. Welcome to another That Gets My Goat. Oh, I'll just be silent through this one. Then. Oh, okay. I'm here with my silent friend, Rish Outfield, who has already spoken and blown his vow of silence by telling us he's going to be silent. You ever seen that t-shirt that says, Ask Me About My Vow of Silence? <laughs> I have not. Oh, never mind then. But uh, are you a fan of those kind of t-shirts, the sarcastic sayings t-shirts? Yeah. You like a lot of those? I mean, a lot of them aren't funny. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like the ones that you're going to find in, at Walmart tend to not be very funny because they have to aim at the lowest uh, denominator. You know, the people that think Duck Dynasty is entertainment. Okay. You know, the, the dentally impaired. So I, it's rare that I see one of those. You know, it's like, it's always beer o'clock is on a T-shirt or something like that. But, uh, you know, every once in a while you'll see some hipster clown with a T-shirt on that I find amusing. I, there was that shirt that I told you I thought was just so funny that had, like, the Hogwarts symbol on it or whatever. It says, I want to be in Hufflepuff, said no wizard ever. Yeah, I do recall that. I thought that that was brilliant. I still think it's brilliant. <laughs> I want to orally pleasure whoever came up with that. Okay. That's my second goal besides writing a novel this year. All right. It's good that you're you're getting your goals together and working towards them. You'll have to follow up with me later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a guy that I work with that wears nothing but those... Uh, ironic t-shirts. Yeah, not ironic. The, oh. the, the sarcastic phrase t-shirts. Well, give me an example, please. He has, like, the one, and it, and it looks like the Pink Floyd writing, and it says comfortably dumb on it. Mm. Um, he has one that's... You know, it's got a really long phrase on there, and it's... I can't remember what it says, but it's something about how, like, annoying it is to sit there and stare at somebody and read their T-shirt or something like that. Oh, okay. I hear you. Lots of, lots of those T-shirts, and I don't know. I guess here and there I have seen some that I like. I want to say that I saw one at the convention that I thought was good. Some, some Game of Thrones thing, but I can't remember what it was. It wasn't the, uh... I want you for the for the night's watch, take the black today or whatever one. I thought that was neat. What's that the name of the guy? Bad. He's pointing. The old bear. Uh, what's his Jorah face? Joris Mormont or something. Like Not that. Jorah Mormont Jorah. though, because mm -hmm. Jorah is the one that's with Daenerys. It was whoever Mormont. Okay. Uh, he has another name, but he's also it was Lord Mormont. We'll just say that. <laughs> All right. The old bear. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, there was one. There, there are a bunch that have Tyrion, and they'll use the word imp yeah. in place of pimp. Yeah, it's so it'll be like out there for an imp. imp. Yeah, and I, you know, I guess the very first person who ever made that joke was onto something. It was pretty clever. I'm not going to pleasure them, but all the other people who thought that that would be funny, they, you know, they they need to be killed. Okay. Sorry, just saying. All right. Do you? How did we get on this? That the ironic, the, the not our ironic, the sarcastic T-shirt. Uh, I think it had some. Must it was something you must have said there at the start. I can't remember. But there were, you know, the, we we saw a bunch of. I don't know if they're clever. Are they clever? Like there was one that had Loki, with like a magic wand and a cereal box parody that said Loki charms. Oh yeah. And I thought that that was amusing-ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had a bunch of cereal box type charms. Ones. There was another good one that I can't remember what it was. There was one that they were selling at that same Game of Thrones booth that just said the book was better. And it wasn't in like any specific font. And, you know, it didn't have an illustration to say what book they were talking about. But I think that was the point, was that the book is always better kind of thing. But um... Yeah, it's funny me complaining about t-shirts like that because... 
I would probably wear all of them were I still allowed to. I've kind of given up on t-shirts because recently they put in a dress code at work and I have to wear a shirt with a collar. So I have to wear a polo shirt or fancier to work. And so my t-shirt collection is, is looking sad and sparse now. It's, it's just gone downhill. I can't uh, wear any of my shirts to, to work anymore. and So I can wear them like one, maybe two days a week. I can wear a t-shirt, if that, and so I don't care anymore. It's sad. It was taken away from me. They came and they took it. <sighs> is this what you wanted to talk about? Not really, but this is kind of like an old gets my goat. Doesn't it make you feel like that? We're talking about things that get our goat. Oh, no, no. It just makes me feel sad and old. Really? Talking but about t-shirts makes you feel old? I think that that's kind of what we were talking about, just being sad and old. Earlier, you and I went for this walk, and it's the second walk I've done today. I, I think I walked like a mile and a half earlier today because the sun and was your shining. dogs are barking, ain't they? <laughs> but <laughs> the the thing that bummed me out is that it doesn't matter. You know, I'm I I didn't lose a, a pound, I didn't lose a gram. We walked, or I walked like three miles today, and it's not going to make a damn difference how long I live or how fat I am or in what shape I'm in. In fact, you know, if I walk much longer today, when I get home, I'll start having those leg spasms that hurt like nobody's business, <laughs> which is just your body reminding you death is coming soon. I just wanted you to feel what this, what it would what be like. So you recognize it when it comes for sure. <laughs> That's and, your body reminding you of that. I used to get those leg spasms when I was 10 years old playing soccer so, I guess death is coming much sooner for me. It was already reminding me back then. Okay, I was well, already old at 10. Explain then, then why I would have those. The first time it ever happened, uh, when we went to Disneyland, and I don't think it was Gay Day, the day that I always tell you about, which is just <laughs> my favorite day, maybe ever, but definitely up there, my five favorite days. You went on May Day instead. <clears throat> and, you know, we, we lost the car, which is something that you have experienced with me. And I always experience, I, I, oh, geez, talking about things that get my goat. But the Disneyland parking lot used to be this 20-acre stretch of just spots and spots and spots and spots and spots, as far as the eye could see. You know, it had all been orange groves, and then Walt just plowed it all in the 50s, and it became parking lot. And it was easy when we were children to find where you parked because each segment of the parking lot had a different Disney character. Oh, it's the Jiminy Cricket section, the Eeyore section, the Gurgi from the Black Cauldron section, you know, the, uh, the, the Richard Dreyfuss's character from Down and Out in Beverly Hills section. And then uh, at the end of the 90s in the 21st century at some point, they raised all that and turned that into Disney California Adventure, and they just built a vertical parking lot right there that would just take up like a square block but just be level after level after level after level of parking spaces, mm -hmm. um, which is great for property value in Southern California and all that stuff. But it's absolutely hell for finding your fudging car. Now, granted, each one of these levels, you know, has OK, you're on level three, you're on level seven or whatever. But the first time I went to Disneyland upon moving to L.A. and discovering this new parking lot, I didn't realize that I should have written down that I was on level seven or whatever. It was just able to say, okay, we're right by the elevator. We'll remember that. And so we went and we had our whole day, you know, where you get to Disneyland as soon as it opens and you spend the whole time, you watch the fireworks, you cry during Fantasmic, and then it's time to go to your car. And we got out of the elevator and we didn't know which level it was. And it just was the car wasn't there. And then I discovered there are several elevators. And so we just walked and walked and walked looking for the damned car. And your dogs were barking? <laughs> well, Pluto was complaining a little bit. Uh, I don't know if Goofy's a dog, but he, he kept to himself. Goofy and is a dog. I, I saw a really old Disney cartoon where Goofy, this is pre he being named Goofy. When he was Dippy Dog. He yeah. was called Dippy Dog. I yeah. was like, what the? It's good that they moved on from that because that one just doesn't sing as much as uh, Mickey Mouse does. All right. Sorry, I interrupted your story. Get no, back no, no, to it. it's you fine. Were it just, we were walking. I think it ended up being... Level one. 
<laughs> no, it just it ended up being like eleven thirty when we finally found the car, and the park closed at ten. And what happened was, you know, there was just this huge line of cars trying to get out of the parking lot, and we had to wait for the whole line of cars to be gone, and then look at what remained. Eventually, one of those the cars that remained was my car. And so I was driving home. I was on the 10 or whatever. And suddenly my left leg, there was just this excruciating pain. And it was just like, ah, ah. And I, it froze up like I couldn't mm-hmm. move it or whatever. And luckily, you know, I was on the freeway. So I only needed my right leg to run, you know, the brake and the, and the, the, the gas. But I was just like, holy sh, oh, oh my, what? And he's like, what, what, what? Is there a tarantula in the car? What is going on? You know? And I didn't know. I had never experienced this thing before. And then again during the night, that it happened again. Did it, it was, wake you up in the middle of it? Oh, fudge, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, those were good ones. And I was just one of those where you're like, ah! I didn't know what to do about it. To this day, if whenever that happens, I don't know what to do about it. I, I, you know, I've tried hitting my leg as hard as I fucking can, <laughs> hoping that, you know, if I hit the muscle in just the right point, the leg will break off <laughs> because that would be less painful than what's happening right now. And I assume that stressing the muscle beyond what it's used to or whatever is what causes this this terrible, terrible pain. But yeah, that was never anything that I experienced as a child. And, there, you know, it was once I hit te- what what the doctors call over the hill that I started to experience well, this. Well, it's thing. really just because they had the Jiminy Cricket parking lot when you were a kid and they didn't have it when you were an adult. That's why you never experienced it when you were a kid. If you'd only lost your car as a child... <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I used to get that uh, a fair amount when I was younger. I had played a lot of soccer, and then I also played football in high school. And yeah, when you do a lot of exercising, a lot of running, it will sometimes do that. Yeah, I remember the first time it happened to me. I was probably around twelve or something. And yeah, it was the wake you up in the middle of the night thing. Your entire leg is just like all, all the muscles going at once it's like that bit from agent carter where they had the weapon that they found and it's it was supposed to be a massage thing that he invented but instead it caused all the muscles to like freak out and break the bones underneath them because they're all flexing to the nth degree yeah yeah that's good times we'll have to see maybe that'll happen tonight although i walked more yesterday than i did today so I'll probably be okay. Well, maybe we should just grab this device and go for and, and record this on while walk. walking. I don't know. There's, you said something to me, and it wasn't that recently, but it echoes through eternity. <laughs> and it was, you gave up drinking soda for six months. Your wife said she would actually have sex with you if you went six months without drinking soda. And there was also some, you know, slight possibility that you would lose weight if you didn't drink soda, because that's, that's just sugar and I don't know what water it, sugar is there water, water in there I'm not sure about the water but I'll, I'll give you the sugar and so you went and I, I'm sure you didn't go a full six months because it's you we're talking about but you went at least three days in a row without <laughs> drinking soda and then you looked you know you had X'd it in October and here we are in April and you hadn't drank soda in all that time and you weighed yourself and it hadn't I'm sorry let's ask Mr. Jackson to come in it didn't mean a goddamn thing. It hadn't made a fudging bit of difference. Suffer well, to me it would be suffering. With you, it was just like, well, I didn't get to reward myself with something that I really like. For six months, you know, six times the lifespan of a mayfly, I didn't get to drink any pib extra. And it didn't make a difference in my weight. It didn't make a difference in my health. I still have rectal cancer. And when you told me that, I was just like, oh my gosh, there is no God. <laughs> You know, I, I worried that maybe there wasn't, but holy cow, no to die and find just the void, it was kind of shocking and horrifying. Now, have we ever recorded in a rainstorm before? I don't know. I'm wondering how much that'll show up on here. I'm going to put the headphones back in. Yeah, I think it'll probably show up pretty well. But <laughs> well, do we want that? Hopefully it's pleasant. It's like, you know, hopefully these people are like Eddie Rabbit. All our listeners love a rainy night. <laughs> Ah, you know, I'd forgotten about that song completely until like last year when somehow for some reason I heard it again and I was just like, oh yeah, I remember this song from when I was like six. Weird. How did I forget that it ever existed? But then you hear the song and you realize, yeah, it's probably not anything worth remembering. It's 
It's all right. Anyhow, I mean, this is a, a, a that gets my goat where we're going to complain, and that's what that's what gets my goat was supposed to be. But do you remember this conversation where you said where we, and we've had the conversation a million times since that day of, you know what, I, I I didn't drink soda for six months for nothing. We've talked about you eat some French fries, and then you go exercise because you figure well, if I exercise, it'll make up for the indulgence I just had with greasy food that actually tastes good. But you would have to exercise for a week to work off those French fries. You would have to have a barium enema, not eat for a month, and exercise the whole time you're not eating <laughs> to make up for the six French fries that you ate. And they weren't even your fries. They were, Somebody had left them on the seat. It wasn't even on the table. <laughs> The, the last Tuesday, they were some really kid hard. Had, some kid had put him into his belly button, pretending that he had ketchup in his belly button, and maybe he did, for God's sake. Ugh. And one of them in his rectum, and then left him on the seat, and you ate those. And exercising from dawn till dusk for the rest of your life, you'd never, ever make up for eating those french fries. You see, there's an interesting thing that I've learned about the human body in the time that I've been trying to lose weight. The thing about it is, just being alive is what uses the most calories. Just all the stuff, like your heart having to beat, and your liver having to live, and your pancreas creasing, and all the stuff that those things do, is what uses up all the calories that you eat for the most part. Your muscles going like this, just walking around, or even just sitting there. Like, the resting calories, when you sit on your butt all day long, you use up more calories than you do running for, we'll say, 15 miles. You would run and still not use as much calories that your body uses just to be alive, just to be able to breathe, and all that kind of stuff. And what the whole uh, exercise thing does is that it uh, makes your body need more calories to be alive. So if you're always exercising and you have more muscles or larger, stronger, whatever muscles to feed, then your body just needs more calories. And your body with more muscles on it, sitting still right here in the car, uses even more calories. And the exercise itself... You're not trying to burn off your calories. What you're trying to do is raise your metabolism rate. That's what the key is. That's why people exercise day in and day out. You know, you got to keep your rate going so it will eat the fat that you have left over. Your body will eat itself to stay alive. But yeah, it can be really frustrating. I know what you mean. Like, I've talked about my... my race against Clay Duggar to get to uh, 250 pounds, and uh, just the other day, I weighed myself. I, I had this goal. I told my wife, okay, I'm going to make it down to 294 by Monday. I was all set to do it, but on Saturday, I was terrible. I ate really badly. I had like a bacon cheeseburger for lunch. I had a whole bag of these caramel bugles. Oh my gosh, they're the most amazing tasting things, but they're definitely not good for you. So I you see, I, I know you. They could have tasted like eye crust, and you still <laughs> would have eaten the whole bag. It doesn't have anything to do with how delicious they are. That's probably true. But I ate the whole bag. That's how bad yeah, I was no, being Yeah, no, that's that how day. you do with everything. And I had soda and everything else, and I was terrible. And then I weighed myself the next morning, and I was down two pounds. Oh, okay. See that? I did not predict that. And I was like, the what in the hell? Okay. Well, I'm going for it. I'm, I'm to 295 now. We can get to 294 tomorrow. And I tried to eat better. I tried really hard. And I walked everywhere. I, I had, you know, my little thing counting my steps. And I, ha I had like 17,000 steps, which is the most steps I'd ever done since getting the step counter in a single day. I did that yesterday on Sunday and so that I could get to 294 by Monday morning so it got up this morning granted I did eat some things that I shouldn't have like 
My wife made these roasted potatoes that are so tasty, and so I ate more of those than I should have. Again, you'd eat a bag called Cambodian foreskins <laughs> because there's a bag in front of you. You don't care what it tastes like. Also, my wife made caramel popcorn. I didn't eat very much of it, but I did have some of it. And then Monday morning, I thought, okay, I, I ate better than I did on Saturday. And Saturday, I lost two pounds. So Monday morning, I get on the scale, I weigh myself. 297, I was up two pounds from the day before. <laughs> I even stayed up late Sunday night. It was 10 o'clock, and my wife's going to bed, and I said, you know what, I'm going to go down and walk on the treadmill for a while because I want to get to 294 tomorrow. I need to make up for those potatoes that I ate and the caramel popcorn. So I went and I walked, and then, yeah, I woke up this morning, weighed two pounds more. Three pounds away from my goal of losing four pounds. I was trying to lose four pounds, I lost one. So it can be very frustrating, and there's no... I, I sat here and told you exactly how it's supposed to work. Like, I, I know all about it, and I have the plan, and I have the, the, the road map to success. But I can't put it into practice, because every time I think I'm doing something right, I'm going in the wrong direction. It definitely can be very frustrating. I think it only gets worse, like you were talking about being old. It only gets worse when you're old. Once you're like over 40, it's like twice as hard to lose weight as it would have been when you were in your 30s and four times as hard as when you were in your 20s and so on and so forth. Well, can you remember what Louis C.K. said? You know, he had some kind of ankle problem and he goes to the doctor. Can you remember any of this? Uh, yeah, I remember. I think you told me about it, the, the Louis C.K. bit. Oh, do you? You never actually saw this I don't know bit? if I actually saw the actual bit, but I may have. I can't remember. But, yeah, he goes to the doctor, and he's got an ankle problem, and they do an x-ray, and he's like, yeah, your problem is this kind of worn out. And Louis C.K. expects the doctor to do something to fix it, and he's just like, oh, no, no, you're 45, you're old. I was like, dude, this hurts a lot. And he goes, well, you can take a leave. Just take a leave. And you can take whatever amount. It doesn't matter. Like, don't pay attention to the dosage. He said take 10 a leave a day. I said, I heard, doesn't that stuff, like, hurt your intestines? He goes, oh, yeah, it'll do some intestinal damage after a while. But you just got to weigh that against how much you like your ankle not hurting. He says, but if I was an athlete, okay, okay, let's get this straight. You're not an athlete, okay? So don't even bring that into it. Yeah, that's me. I'm not an athlete. It's been a long time since I was an athlete. Well, I was watching this movie the other day, and there was a 17-year-old kid, and he was out uh, at a, an all-night diner, and he just kept ordering these, uh, he called it queso, but it was, you know, tortilla chips and then just liquid cheese. <laughs> and you dip the liquid cheese, uh, the chips into the liquid cheese. And then when, when he was done, he ordered another one. I, and I guess from the amount of bowls on the table, he was on his like sixth or seventh. And I remembered when I was a kid and, you know, I could eat that. I could eat a metric ton of crap and I, I wouldn't make. And a, you did on a few occasions. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, me more than most. Because my metabolism was such that it didn't matter. I would never gain a solitary pound. I was one of those kids that was always too skinny. And then one day that stopped working. And it just, you know, it was like, holy cow. And I remember at work, this girl Cheryl said, it's like, wow, have you just started, have you been drinking a lot of beer lately? And I was like, oh, no, I, do I sound hungover? And she's like, no, but all of a sudden you have like this beer belly. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, what? And it was like the first I had noticed it. All of a sudden, this had happened. and You hit that bump or that uh, wall, I guess. And suddenly the body doesn't do what it used to do. And yeah, that's uh, that's rough. I think it was that same year or the next year that I really, really tried to uh, get in shape. And I went running and just punished the hell out of my body. I mean, it, you hear the stories about the Vietnamese torturing prisoners. I did all the stuff that they did to myself to get into shape, you know, and would be, I would be so, so hungry at night <laughs> that I would stick myself 
with bamboo under the fingernails. No, I'm sorry. You hug yourself upside down by a rope and then put a hungry rat inside of a sack and tied it around your neck over your head. Yeah, and, and that's what Chuck Nor Chuck Norris took that out. I'll tell you that yeah. much. He bit the rat. Yeah, he remember. killed the rat. Sorry, oh, Chuck Norris. <laughs> he is the best of us. Anyway, yeah, I just I punished my body. It would be, it would I would be just so so hungry. And I remember it was I hadn't been that hungry since I was like a little kid. When you have no control over your body and you're just like. <laughs> And I was just like, I want to cry. I'm so hungry. But I told myself, absolutely no food, no food after nine o'clock. And I kept to it because I had this psychosis in my brain. It was, oh my gosh, I hope it never happens to you, man. Where there's a girl and you want to impress her and you feel these things that are like feelings for her. Oh gosh, don't ever let it happen to you, man. Okay, it was the sure worst. And I would just be like, no, I don't care how hungry I am. I <laughs> Stop it. I'm not eating. And that, and, uh. Well, the big problem is that you always stay up till 4 a.m. every night. You know, not eating after 9 o'clock is, that's a guideline for people who go to bed at like 10 or 11. <laughs> <laughs> okay, these, these things are not untrue. <laughs> You're not supposed to go seven hours without food just because it's after 9 o'clock. <laughs> But anyway, this punishment that I put my body through, you know, of just constantly, you know, I had to do this. I could not go to bed unless I had exercised. Uh, it was, a, I don't know, an obsession or one of those weird things that, it you know, was a phase and I had to get over it, I guess. And I look back now on it and I just shiver. It didn't matter. I mean, it may be, maybe it mattered because at one point my Irish friend John said, what have you done to yourself? You look like fucking Karen Carpenter. And after that, I was just like, oh, oh, gosh. Uh, he said I looked like Fukin Karen Carpenter, which to me was kind of insulting. And so I thought, well, okay, well, maybe from now on I can eat after 9 o'clock if I'm hungry. But anyway, I was just I was trying to say, you know, once you hit that wall, it's like you can punish yourself to this point. And maybe I had a delusion there and I thought that I was still fat and I wasn't. But it's like the amount of effort that it would take to get – the flat stomach that I used to have just eating two Big Macs. <laughs> it, it's, it's impossible. You'd have to get a gym membership at two competitive gyms and, you know, hire a trainer and stuff. Yeah, that is definitely one of those things that comes with age. Easiness. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was like when I was a kid. I just ate, and that's why my problem is now. When I was a kid, I could eat and eat and eat and didn't have to worry about anything. And it was because I did things. I never sat around for eight hours a day at a desk working on a computer. I, you know, walked place everywhere I went. I had to walk to and from school, and it was miles away. It was far. And I played football, or I played soccer, or I just played games with my friends. When I wanted to do something, we would go out and do something. I don't even have friends anymore. You know, those those days are behind me, I guess. So instead, you know, I, I, I don't even do real walks anymore. I'm on a treadmill. That's the saddest thing of all. You're just walking in place like, a, like the rat that's running on that wheel in his little cage. Just to get your exercise. Because... I guess there's no other way to do it. I don't know. It's, it's a sad thing getting old. It's a hard life out there. For an for imp? Toy. Oh, for a toy. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard for an imp, too, though, I'm sure. I'm afraid this thing's not recording. I don't... To be continued next time. <laughs> Run while you still can! That Gets My Goat is produced under Creative Commons 3.0, attribution, no derivatives, share alike license. That means you can't sell it, but you can share it with everybody. It also means you have too much time on your hands. I went to the doctor because my ankle hurt, right? Because my ankle, like I was limping for like a month out of nowhere. And the doctor, he brings me and he shows me an x-ray of my ankle. He's like, yeah, your ankle's just, uh, just worn out. <laughs> Did you see that dark area? Ugh, it's all hardened. <laughs> yeah, they get like that.
and they're not good anymore. And at one point I was like, hey, what if I was like an athlete or something? He goes, you're not an athlete, so no to whatever else you were about to say. 